The children of Israel were camped in the plains of Moab across the Jordan River from Jericho. They were ready to go into the land. But who would lead them? Miriam and Aaron had already died and God had told Moses that he would die soon. Moses was concerned for the people and who would be their next leader. Look at Numbers 27, 15 through 17. Then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in before them who may lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep that which have no shepherd. Moses asked God to set a man over the congregation of Israel. What are the characteristics of this leader? Now we know this leader to be Joshua. How did Joshua meet these characteristics? What was his mission? And where do we see Yeshua in Joshua? the man God set over the children of Israel. I'm Dan Cathcart, and this is Shadows of the Messiah. Let's dig into Moses' request for God to set a man over the congregation. Moses addresses Jehovah, the God of the spirits of all flesh. The phrase, spirits of all flesh, is an interesting phrase. It's used only one other place in the Bible, and that place was when the leadership of the children of Israel was being questioned. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram insisted that Moses and Aaron were taking too much authority over Israel. They wanted the priesthood to be open to any man of Israel. God was ready to strike the entire congregation until Moses and Aaron interceded. Look at Numbers 16, 20 through 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Then they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and you be angry with all the congregation? When looking at these two passages together, Moses uses this phrase, God of the spirits of all flesh, to call attention to his concerns over the congregation. Job uses similar words in one of his discourses with his companions. Look at Job 12, 9 through 10. Who hath not known in all these that the hand of Jehovah hath done this? in whose hand is the breath of every living thing and the spirit of all flesh of man. The subject of this discourse is the sovereignty and justice of God. Within Job's discourse is the very familiar verse that Job would always trust in God. It's interesting that we tend to leave off the second part of this verse, Job 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. Job believes in the inherent justice of God. So Moses' appeal to God based on his identity as the God of the spirits of all flesh is an appeal to his justice, asking God to make clear his choice for the next leader over the congregation. The idea is supported when we look at Moses' choice of words to describe the children of Israel. He uses the Hebrew word aida, number 5712, which comes from the root word ed or aid, number 5707, meaning witness or testimony. Moses is asking God to set a man over the witnesses. Moses is asking for a public declaration of God's chosen man. Moses then goes on to list the essential qualities that the new leader must have. He must be able to go out before them and go in before them. This is important, so Moses repeats it in a slightly different form. He must be able to lead them out and bring them in. The first phrase is in relation to the leader being visible to the congregation, and the second is in terms of the congregation that they may have someone to follow. 
Moses wanted them to have someone who could not only lead them out from where they are, but had a specific destination or goal for where they were going. He will lead them out of the wilderness and into the promised land. Finally, Moses wanted a new leader to be as a shepherd, so the congregation would not be like a flock without a shepherd. Now, what are the qualifications of a shepherd? David, who himself was a shepherd, uh, beautifully describes the role of a shepherd in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The shepherd provides food and water and safe resting places. He protects the flock from their enemies, providing safety even when surrounded by their enemies. He acts for their good. Now we turn to God's reply. Look at Numbers 27, 18 through 19. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hands on him. Set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation, and inaugurate him in their sight. God tells Moses that the next leader will be Joshua, the son of Nun, who qualifies for the position because the Spirit is in him. The theologians John Wesley and Matthew Poole both comment that the Spirit is the spirit of government, wisdom, and the fear of the Lord. In other words, God is directly answering Moses' request from the God of the spirits of all flesh. The commissioning of Joshua is to be done before the congregation. Again, the word is Ida in their sight. The children of Israel are to physically see and be witnesses to the fact that God has chosen and commissioned Joshua to be their leader. Now, how did Joshua attain the spirit of governance, wisdom, and the fear of the Lord? From the time the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Joshua was with Moses at his right hand. We first see Joshua when he took charge of the armies of Israel and led the campaign against Amalek. Exodus 17, verses 9 through 10. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. While Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days, Joshua was Moses' aide. He stayed nearby. After the sin of the golden calf, when Moses took the tent of meeting outside the camp, Joshua stayed at the tent of meeting. When Moses sent the 12 spies into the promised land, Joshua, along with Caleb, brought back a good report of the land. Joshua is then uniquely qualified to succeed Moses. Moses is to lay his hands on Joshua. The word lay is the Hebrew word samak, number 5564. It means to prop up or to lean upon. Moses is to lean his hand on Joshua. In this way, Moses is identifying with Joshua and conferring his authority on him. Numbers 27, verse 20. And you shall give some of your authority to him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. The Hebrew word for authority is number 1935, hod, which is usually translated as glory, honor, or majesty. The Hebrew word for obedient is number 8055, shma, meaning to hear and obey. Moses was to lean his hand on Joshua, identifying with him, and by doing so, he would give Joshua some of his glory, honor, and majesty so that the children of Israel would hear and obey him. Now, 
what was Joshua supposed to do? He was to lead them into the Promised Land, but first they had to cross the Jordan River. Deuteronomy 31, verse 3. The Lord your God Himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. The phrase crosses over comes from the Hebrew word Ibar, number 5674, meaning just that, to cross over. This is the word from which the children of Israel get their name, Hebrew. Abraham was the first person called a Hebrew. Abraham was descended from Shem's grandson Eber, whose name means to cross over. Abraham was also the first of God's chosen people to cross over the Jordan River and go into the Promised Land. Finally, Moses went to die on Mount Nebo, part of the mountains of Abarim. Numbers 27, 12-13 Now the Lord said to Moses, Go up into this Mount Abarim, and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother was gathered. Yes, Abarim is the plural form of Abar. Moses went up to the top of the crossover mountains to view the land that the children of Israel would cross over the Jordan River to possess. For Joshua, the children of Israel crossing over the Jordan River is the beginning of their new lives. Joshua will later refer to this crossing in Joshua 24, verses 2 and 3. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. The Hebrew word for other side is number 56, 76, Eber, meaning a region across or the opposite side. It's from the word Ibar, which means cross over. Joshua was to lead the children of Israel across the Jordan River and into the Promised Land, where he would be empowered to defeat the enemies, driving them out of the land. Look at Deuteronomy 31, 5 through 6. The Lord will give them over to you, that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Joshua was to be strong and of good courage, because the Lord is the one who crossed over before him. Now what does all of this have to do with Yeshua? Now to start with, the name Yeshua is a derivative of Joshua. The name Joshua is number 3091, which means the Lord saves, and the name Yeshua, number 3442, means he will save. Jesus is a transliteration of Yeshua's name from the Greek, passing through the Latin, and then on to English. Matthew tells us that his name is Yeshua because he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, that is Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. Joshua was qualified to be the next leader because the Spirit was in him. Yeshua was qualified to because Jehovah the God of the spirits of all flesh, testified by the Holy Spirit that Yeshua was his son and conferred on him the authority of the Father. Luke 3, verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. This was done in front of all the witnesses where John the Baptist was baptizing. Mark 1, verses 4 and 5. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preached a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. 
Then skipping down to verse 9, it says, It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Yeshua, even from a young boy, was filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. When he was just 12 years old, he lingered in the temple after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, discussing the Torah with the teachers of the Torah. Look at Luke 2, 46 through 47. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Isaiah wrote about the one who would come filled with the Spirit, who would be the just ruler. Isaiah 11, 2-4 The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide the equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Yeshua's mission was to bring us out and to take us in. He was to lead us out of our lives of sin and take us into eternal life. He takes us across the Jordan River into our new lives. Look at John 5, verse 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. He is our shepherd, our good shepherd, who feeds his flock and gives them rest. John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Ezekiel testifies about the Good Shepherd. Look at Ezekiel 34, 12 through 15. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. He exhorts us not to be afraid or troubled because he goes before us. John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. When he comes again to take us with him into a new life, he will come with power and with authority. Revelation 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before the Lord day and night has been cast down. Joshua and Yeshua's name both allude to their mission of bringing salvation to their people. God set Joshua over the children of Israel to bring them into the promised land and lead them in battle to take the land. God set Yeshua over all those who call on the name of the Lord. He is there to take us into eternal life and lead us in the battle against our enemies. Thanks for watching today. I'm Dan Cathcart, and this has been Shadows of the Messiah. Shalom and be blessed.